mystery and tension, those are two elements that I gravitate to. I like to hear a story that has some mysteries that I, I don't know about from the beginning, you know? In a lot of these songs, you're not going to hear the whole thing from the beginning. It's going to develop over the course of the song. But in this music, partially it happens just because there isn't a harmonic instrument. Part of it happens because of the way the songs unfold. Part of it happens just because of the way we play. You know, not in so much of a, maybe a glib fashion, but more like a little bit more reserved. I like to read a lot of sci-fi. Ursula K. Le Guin's book, uh, Lathe of Heaven, it, among others, relates to um, uh, my feelings about uh, mystery, negative space, tension. This book in particular continues to unfold. Something happens through the sky, basically. He kind of, there's been a holocaust, kind of. Uh, even that's kind of unclear, actually. Uh, it's unclear whether it actually happened or if he dreamed it. Basically, he continues to dream, and whenever he dreams, that becomes a new reality, and he's the only one that realizes it. There are other things that have happened. It's very strange the way it goes on, but you never quite know exactly what's going on. Your ground is constantly being pulled out from under you. The guys in the band are Avishai Cohen on trumpet, Marcus Gilmore on drums, and Joe Martin on the bass, and myself, of course, on tenor saxophone. The reason I like to have uh, bands without a chordal instrument, I like it mainly because it actually puts more responsibility on each member, kind of the opposite of freedom. It's kind of like uh, the feeling of being, um, if, you were, if you're in um, a place with uh, so much space, so much freedom, like if you had an, an infinite amount of time that you know, you have no responsibilities, you have to put some responsibilities on yourself. All this music was written with this band in mind. I think everyone has a fairly wide palette of things that they can do so that if we want to, we can be fairly soft and relaxed, or we can be kind of forward speaking. Avishai Cohen, he's very funny. <laughs> um, Avishai has, a, I think he has a fair amount of humor in his playing, but he's also very, um, it's very serious. The way we play together, there is, there can be some um, of a nod between uh, Wayne and Miles. I think just because we've we've both heard a lot of that music, and some of the melodies um, and some of the the harmony between us, there are a fair amount of intervals that are similar, a lot of fourths and fifths. I've been playing with Joe for a long time maybe in various bands. I think Joe's not afraid to embrace the role of the bass and state that role without um, trying to jump into the roles of other instruments. Marcus is uh, fantastic in many ways. Like everyone else, all firmly rooted in, in, I hate to say the word for tradition, but in music of the past, honors the music of the past, while still embracing the mo uh, what's going on now, the moment, the future. They all have their own voice, and Marcus in particular. Uh, there's a tune on this record called Sonic for Stevie, and um, it's in ref reference to uh, Stevie Wonder. 
uh, and there's a there's a bit of a, a melody in the end that's kind of a it's kind of a quote, but it, that's how the tune started to unfold. And that tune is called "Blame It on the Sun," and that's a song that um, I heard a lot as a child. I started writing this tune and listening to that record for the last five years or so. I've been just trying to figure out uh, what is the blues and what does that mean to me. You know, you hear you're in school, you're playing, you're a jazz musician, you should deal with the blues and swing. But uh, I think it needs to be personal, meaningful, and have some kind of reference that you can touch and hold and do something about. Because otherwise, I think the blues can otherwise be banal. So, and I've heard it, I hate to say, done in that way too all too often. And I actually believe the blues to be sacred, um, like a, a spiritual discipline, and it needs to be taken seriously. And so I've kind of, in a way, kind of uh, avoided it because I felt like I would disrespect it. So this one tune, for example, in a sort of lexicon of many things I've been doing, was kind of a window for me into looking back at my childhood and seeing how the blues and Stevie Wonder, among others, being a master of the blues affected my life.